Welcome to Ask the Expert, an award-winning daily series from 8.30 to 9 a.m. to help small businesses. If you have any questions, ask them in the, in the comments of the live feed. And if you need any more advice, please do join the official QuickBooks SMB community group on Facebook, where there are accountants and business experts on hand to help you 24 seven. During the live session, I will be running a poll, so please do engage with it and I will reveal the results at the end of the show. If you're on TikTok, please do check out the Be Your Own Boss competition. You can pitch a new business idea and you could win an investment, mentorship and business advice to help make it a reality. Tag hashtag Be Your Own Boss to enter. I want to say thank you so much to everyone for joining me today. My name is Ariona. I'm the Managing Director of Majors Accounts, which is a small family-run accountancy practice based in South East London. I am a qualified chartered accountant with the ACCA, and I'm also a member of the UK Practitioners Network uh, with the ACCA and a member of the SME Global Forum. Um, I have been working in practice now for around 14, 15 years. And alongside that, um, I, you know, studying a few degrees in different areas, um, namely accounting, finance, um, strategic finance and law and international banking and finance also. So during that time, I really got to see how businesses work and compare that to the theory and try and couple the two together to make a difference to businesses. So in seeing how they work, you know, I was able to see um, what their pain points are, what their goals, ambitions are, whether it was to grow, whether it was to become more profitable um, and see how I could possibly help uh, using the knowledge that uh, I gained through my education. As I mentioned, we are based in South East London. Um, we provide support to the SME space, so uh, self-employed and limited companies. We have about 50-50 split between the two um, clients. Uh, we have clients in all sectors, all industries, and over the years, we've really seen it all. Um, but one of our main sectors at the moment is the construction industry, but also um, most recently, a lot of online businesses and really trying to help them to ensure that their processes are as streamlined as possible. Some others that we have are the hospitality sector, so pubs, bars, restaurants, um, barbers, hairdressers, IT companies, um, nurseries, the list really goes on. And since becoming managing director, I've spearheaded and implemented a digitalization strategy in order to become a paperless office, which I'm proud to say we are now. And we are also a QuickBooks online only practice, and we've become somewhat experts in this space. Um, so now everything that we do can be done online uh, using QuickBooks as our main kind of product, our bread and butter of um, what we do, and then attaching apps onto that and creating a streamlined ecosystem for our clients. And it's great because their experience has been amazing. You know, they don't have us chasing them 24 seven for paperwork and um, them chasing us to try and find out, you know, how much tax they've got to pay or how their business is doing in real time. But it's also been great for our team as well because they're using the latest cutting edge technology to really help make a difference and add some value to our clients' businesses. So now clients don't actually need to come to the office. Um, seeing as we have clients from Ireland all the way down to the Isle of Wight, previously some would have actually taken a plane to come and see us. Now they don't need to do that. Um, we can do everything online, although we are here as well. We are human beings, so anyone can come and meet us. But there is that flexibility now and um, that ability to have a lot more meetings um, with our clients than we would have had previously. And, you know, this has helped to really build on providing a more personalized service for our clients and also as we are family run practice then um, we do try to treat our team and our clients like family and that's our culture here and it's really helped to build up that excellent rapport um, with our clients and bring us closer to them uh, so we can act as the finance director for our clients but without the price tag that usually comes with that. 
Now, during this time, our efforts haven't gone unnoticed. Um, Major's Accounts has been nominated for a couple of awards by the British Accountancy Awards, and I have been nominated for a few awards for Women in Accounting and Finance 2020, and also for Top Women in Accounting globally. So enough about us. Um, as we seem to be, you know, the last year and a half now that it's coming up to has been really difficult for everybody, but it seems like we're starting to come out um, of this rut and hopefully get back to some normality, whether, it, you know, the speed of that we'll see, but it seems like we're getting there. There is tiny light at the end of the tunnel, but now it's time to think about um, pivoting and positioning your business and being able to be flexible to diversify um, your business to ensure that you can continue to trade and really thrive. And in this time, as we do start to go back to normal, a lot of businesses are going to be finding difficulty um, balancing costs with income because we may not be growing as, as quickly as you want to, um, but you're slowly easing and transitioning back into work. So you're gonna to have to think of many things, you know, costs and how you're going to pay for these. So it's one of um, the schemes that was available during the last year for those who are VAT registered businesses was the VAT deferral scheme. Now this can help businesses um, massively and it was introduced last year to allow um, for businesses to defer their VAT payment from the 20th of March last year to the end of June. So any VAT liability that was due then to defer into um, the next year and we have up until March next year to pay this. Now, um, you have until the 21st of June to join the new online payment scheme and this will allow you to spread the cost of the repayment over a number of months. And under the scheme, as I mentioned, you have the option to pay your deferred VAT in smaller payments over a longer period. And it's also interest free. So that's something to really bear in mind. And instead, instead of having to repay the full amount, and if you did defer and you intended to pay the full amount, you have to do this by 31st of March. But if you're unable to do that, um, because businesses were hoping to have it all paid off by March, but we're only just starting to go back to some kind of normality now, then you can make these smaller interest-free payments during the 21-22 financial year. But you must, as I mentioned, complete these by the end of March 2022. And the maximum number of payments, if you sign up now, um, it was open a few months ago, but if you sign up by the 21st of June, then you can only split this into eight payments, not any longer than that, unfortunately. And the first payment needs to be made on the day that you sign up. To bear, you must bear in mind that if you don't do this in time and you haven't paid your VAT liability, um, you could incur a 5% penalty of the value of the outstanding VAT and you will also have some interest. So please make sure that you um, sign up to that because it's a great help for cash flow for businesses uh, by the 30th of June. Also, in terms of the future of your business, business there, as I mentioned, we're going back to normality. Um, some people are going to need to be starting to bring some staff back to work, but you're not sure how much to bring them, um, kind of how many hours to bring them back. And also, whether you're going to be able to afford to pay them. So those companies who are still claiming the furlough scheme are going to have a hard choice to make come the end of September when the present furlough scheme ends. And unless business activity picks up between now and September, a significant number of those on furlough will find themselves unemployed. And reaching a decision on who to retain or who to let go is going to be a difficult process for many employers. And you're going to end up facing, um, you know, breaking up teams that have worked tirelessly for you possibly for many years. And yet these are hard decisions that you're going to have to make and time to consider your options really is now. Um, affected business owners, I mean, you should sharpen ideally your pencils or open Excel and start planning. And you need to produce a forecast until at minimum at the end of next year, which sets out possible sales, direct costs, um, other overheads, including your own personal drawings, you have to consider your own expenses, 
and any repayments of loans if you took out any loans during the last year and also any capital acquisitions such as um, that cannot be deferred such as new plant or computer equipment for example now these forecasts can be arranged to display profitability solvency and cash flow and they are really at the moment the only reliable way of trying to measure and decide on the actions that you're going to take like for example if you're going to have to lay off staff or not uh, if you are concerned about staff retention um, and you're worried that this will become an issue then do pick up the phone we can help you to kind of crunch those numbers and come up with a way of at least highlighting um, your options and which ones to consider so don't bury your head in the sand at this time but another option that you could take is using the kickstart scheme so this is great for employees to take on some staff but without the expense in fact the government will give you 1500 pounds for any jobs provided to 16 to 24 year olds in england scotland and wales and they also pay for the national minimum wage of their relevant age for six months up to 25 hours a week and this scheme opened in november there have been many people that have um, kind of enjoyed the benefits of this and once a worker has completed a six month um shift shall we say then you can get somebody new to start another six month shift um, or if you have spent time training those individuals and you like the way they work then you know you've got almost guaranteed an employee that you can keep on after that but the thing is that you must show in your application um, that you're going to support these uh, employees for long-term work uh, for looking for long-term work including career advice and setting goals support them with their cv and interview preparations and um, supporting with supporting them with basic skills such as attendance timekeeping and teamwork but lastly another option that you have available if you um, kind of need some extra cash to give you that boost to keep going is the new recovery uh, loan scheme which was launched on 6th of April and the scheme allows you uh, businesses of any size to access loans and other kinds of finance between 25,000 and 10 million pounds and the scheme will remain open until the 31st of December so you have some time um, to kind of apply and look into the scheme it's intended to provide further support to businesses to help you recover and grow uh, following the the disruption of the pandemic and it can be used as an additional loan on top of any previous loans that you may have taken such as the bounce back loan or the C bills and under this scheme the government will provide lenders with a guarantee of 80 percent on any loans provided to UK um, businesses and it will be open to all businesses including those who have already received any other loans throughout the year and uh, the, the types of finance that are available are term loans and overdrafts between 25,000 and 10 million pounds per business or invoice and asset finance um, is available between 1,000 and 10 million pounds per business as well. The terms of these are up to six years um, for the term loans and asset finance, whereas for overdraft and invoice finance, it, it will be up to 10, up to three years, my apologies. There'll be no personal guarantees either taken on any facilities up to 250,000 and your personal home or private residence cannot be taken as security so you have some peace of mind that they won't come and take your house if it doesn't work out there have been many lenders that have been added to this and um, more are expected to be added so if you haven't already have a look at this it could give you that extra boost um to you know as we start to go back to normal so I'm going to start to take questions now. I see them coming in. We have a question from Daisy from Twitter who says, how can we be using the data about our sales and customers to grow the business? So this is an amazing opportunity which many businesses miss out on. You have data there at your hands um, ready to really use, analyze, and see how you can grow your business. So one of those could be, for example, um, analyzing the type of clients that you have, their, the behaviors, or so their buying patterns, what kind of products do they usually buy, um, what kind of age group are they in, which kind of area are they, um, of the UK, for example, or worldwide, where are you selling more of your products? Um, it may not be just in the UK. 
Um, so things like this can really help to narrow down what you should be focusing more on because you may find out that you have products which you thought you know you were making some money on but when you look at the profitability of that product it may really not be worth continuing as you have another product which you're making so much money on so you should be focusing your time um, and investment in those products that are really most popular and making you the most money or you could look at seeing how you can improve the products that are not selling as much to ensure that you can really make them popular as well. And the other thing is you could look at, for example, with your customers, looking at um, areas that you can provide them with discount codes or things like that to entice them to spend more. We have a few clients that um, have been analyzing um, this, the, the information that, that they have available, and it has seriously made a difference to their business. And this is something that all businesses can do but not many actually understand the importance of it. It's really being smart about how you grow your business. It's not just guessing, going through the woods and hoping that it will work out, but it's really planning your route. And when you plan, failing is you know, a lot less likely. So if you have this information, please, please, please do use it because it's gold dust. And if, if it's available to you, you can make such a difference to your business. We have a question from Iman on Facebook who says, I run a restaurant and it's been amazing the last few months seeing everybody come back in. However, we're having problems with cancellations. Obviously, we can't have as many people in. So when someone cancels, we just completely lose that income. Any advice? Um, yeah, this is a problem that I've seen with a few um, businesses in the hospitality sector, such as restaurants. One way of getting around this is uh, when they do give you a call, ask for a deposit. And this has made a difference to one particular business, business that we have, actually. Um, it has ensured that at least they have some money. But once someone has paid a deposit, the likeliness of them cancelling is very low because they don't want to lose out on that money. Um, but I have seen that some people are calling up multiple restaurants and booking, um, let's say, two or three to make sure that they've got a guaranteed space and they'll only end up going to one. Whereas if you're asking them for a deposit, you know that they, these people are serious and mo more, more likely than not, they will be turning up and you will get that guaranteed sale and when you speak to them if you do say you know during, as you can appreciate during the pandemic um, we can't have to have we can't afford to have cancellations because we have a waiting list and so on so um, a lot of them would be okay with leaving a deposit so that's definitely something that I would um, suggest and what I would do. We have a question from Anthony on Twitter, who says a lot of my businesses, a lot of my business depends on tourism and it doesn't look like we're going to see that coming back anytime soon. What could I be doing to drum up more local business? Yes, so um, we're not really sure if, if we're going to have any tourism um, this summer, whether we're going to be allowed out the country or people are going to be allowed in. Um, so one of the ways that you can try and drum up some more business. Um, I can appreciate it is difficult, but social media um, in your area, I know that I believe on Instagram, if you um, tag your business, it can appear in the local area um, on people's feed or their stories. So, and Facebook, local newspapers, that could help. Not sure how, how much people are reading newspapers or local newspapers nowadays, but that's something. But I would definitely kind of attack social media um, and try and get your name out there as much as possible in your local community to um, kind of entice more people uh, to come. I'm not sure what kind of business you have, but that's how I would go about it when there is a lack of, of tourists. The other thing is to consider, though, if we're not going to be allowed out of the country, then um, we're going to have to go somewhere and, you know, we're going to end up staying inside. So hopefully that business will um, increase anyway, as we have to find somewhere in the UK to go if you're, you know, um, for your business. So it may not be all doom and gloom. Um, we have a question from Paige on Facebook who says, I did open an online version of my business to see us through lockdown and it has definitely helped us stay afloat. Now, though, I don't know if I have enough resource to operate both online and the high street. 
what should I do? Well, that's a great problem to have. <laughs> um, that's amazing that you were able to pivot your business to continue working through the pandemic. And now you've found yourself with a new service line. And hopefully that will allow your business to grow massively as a result. Um, one of the ways, if you don't have enough, enough resources, as I mentioned earlier, um, taking the recovery loan scheme um, to help uh, boost whether it is a lack of resources from cash funds, um, that could really help to boost uh, that, you know, that part of your business to keep going. But obviously you need to make sure that you are going to be able to, to pay it longer term. So you need to assess kind of the money that's coming in, any existing loans that you have and whether you will be able to carry an extra loan. Um, another thing is in terms of if you don't have enough staff, then you definitely can use the Kickstart scheme and you, know, you could have quite a few uh, staff on your books that are being paid by the government. And if they're working 25 hours a week, that may be all that you need them to work in order to give you that boost to, to grow and meet the demands of your the extra part of your business that you've added over the last year, whether that's somebody who's um, going to be working for you online or in the shop. Um, so you have those options available that can really help you without having a huge expense initially. And hopefully by the time that you do um, have to start either paying the loan back or the end of the six month term for the employees in the kickstart scheme, you would have generated enough income in order to be able to either offer um, full time jobs or longer term and also start to pay back the loan. Uh, we have a question from Janet on Instagram who says, I have taken a few of the coronavirus support loans for my business already, and I am con contemplating the recovery loan, but I'm also I also worry about uh, building debt. It may help me survive now, but I may not catch up later. How should I measure whether we should or shouldn't apply for a loan? Okay, this is something that we're working with um, on, working on with our clients. So where they believe that if they did have that extra cash injection to really kickstart their business um, as they're coming back out and going back to normal, and they believe that it will generate um, a lot of income for them, then we look at possible, we look at a forecast, as I mentioned earlier, this is your time to really put a forecast together, um, at least until the end of next year, but ideally, um, I would do a three-year forecast. I know it can be difficult to predict, but based on the information that you have available to you right now, that would be the best way of seeing whether you can afford to add an extra loan and pay that back. Um, so just going through all of the sales, the projected income that you think you will generate and any potential expenses. And again, as I mentioned, consider the money that you need personally, whether it's to pay your mortgage or rent or live on, that's something that you need to put in there as well um, because that money will be coming out of the business as well. So you need to consider whether that business will be able to sustain itself and help um, you with your living costs. But that should give you an idea in terms of cash flow and profitability, whether you can afford to add on that extra loan. Um, but for that, I would say you need a three year cash flow forecast and um, also profit and loss to see whether it's something that you can take on and it will be worth taking on um, at this moment. It may be a case of not taking on too much. Um, if you think you can't pay afford the payments, maybe take on some um, debt, but not as much as maybe you need right now. See if it works out with a smaller amount, which may be easier um, for you to pay back in the future. Uh, we have a question from Kelly on Twitter who says, I see the point in planning regarding potential redundancies in the future, but how can you really approach these decisions? Should it be purely numbers based or performance based? So this will depend really on your business. I know that um, it's not great having to let people go who have been a great asset to your business, who may have racked up a lot of experience and are essential to your business. Um, there are a number of things to consider. I wouldn't, um, if, if you do have, you know, um, the decision to make of who to let go, 
again, it depends on your business, but I wouldn't be looking to let go of those who um, maybe cost too much or, um, you know, things like that. I would look at who is really making a difference to your business. They may be slightly more expensive for you right now, but are they going to give you peace of mind in, you know, in knowing that they've got all the training that they need and their experience? They know how you run your business and how you work. So you won't need to spend time training somebody new um, and they can really hit the ground running. And don't forget, it will take some time for people to get back into um, the groove of working. So a lot of people have been off for the best part of a year. Um, and so definitely I would look at performance based, obviously having a look at what your business can afford as well. But up until September, you have that flexibility with the furlough scheme. So it could be time to kind of bring people back on um, uh, a part time basis to see how they're working and how they're getting back to work. And um, maybe some have actually spent the last year improving their skills. And um, they may be doing even better than they did previously. So definitely I would look at more, I would lean more towards the performance side, but obviously you can't ignore the numbers either because at the end of the day, you have to be able to pay them. Um, but you can also look at asking them if they do come back to work, asking them to reduce their hours. If possible, it's better than making them redundant and they may well go for this because it means at least they have some money coming in rather than losing uh, their job completely. So you have a few options there available um, for you. I hope that's helped. Um, we have a question from David on Facebook Messenger who says, love the idea of the Kickstart scheme. Obviously it helps put money, money, money into the business while still covering some work and giving them opportunity. But do you think in the long run, it works as being cost effective? I don't see the downside of this. The only downside could be that you're having to spend time training these individuals, but you're being paid for um, you know, their cost of training them essentially, and they're working for you at the same time. And at the end of it, you may find that you actually really like them. They've picked up the work um, really well and you wanna keep them on longer term. So it could actually be really great for your business long term as well, apart from short term and helping you out, really try out some stuff without having that burden and that cost, which you may or may not be able to afford at the moment. Um, I think that I'm going to be unable to take any more questions um, at the moment uh, so we're running out of time. However, the poll results are in and we asked you, do you feel supported enough by your accountant? 75% of you said yes and 25% said no. I think that's amazing. Um, one thing that maybe not many businesses um, have kind of appreciated previously is how much help an accountant can be to a business and I think the last year has been a testament to that um, we have had to work so many more hours and provide um, a lot more kind of insight for our clients into their businesses so they can understand them better and plan for the future so I'm glad that you know at least the majority of you have found that you've been able to utilize your accountant um, well during this last year. For those of you who haven't, um, it may be time to really either speak to your accountant, see whether they can provide you an extra service. Um, some may not be as proactive as others, but if you speak to them, most likely they will be able to provide you with the service that you need. Um, if not, obviously you have options available because it may depend on their capacity, but um, definitely speak to them and you'll be surprised how much they can help you um, with your business. So thank you all for tuning in this morning. If you do want to get in touch with myself, uh, you can contact me via our website at majorsaccounts.com where you can come through to the live chat or you can um, leave a message in there and that will come to us, we'll get back to you or leave an appointment. We also have on our website, a new section, which we update regularly with the latest news um, to help businesses uh, with, you know, over the last year has been all the government support, but also general business advice. And we also have an app which you can download from our website, which has great calculators on there. If you're thinking, for example, of taking on a staff member or seeing how much tax you're going to be paying on a certain amount of income, but there's so much more, including latest news, which is updated on there as well. Um, so please do go and download that and have a look. It could be great for your business. 
Um, so coming up on Ask the Expert tomorrow is Toby Milden, who is a diversity and inclusion architect and founder of Milden, a consultancy and advisory business. Tune in to learn how to build a culture of inclusion with your organization. A reminder that if you need any more advice, please do join the official Intuit QuickBooks SMB community group on Facebook, where there are accountants and business experts on hand to help 24 seven. And also, again, don't forget the Be Your Own Boss competition on TikTok, where you can pitch a new business idea and you could win investment, mentorship and business advice. So tag hashtag Be Your Own Boss to enter. I've really enjoyed answering all your questions today. I hope that they've helped and I wish you all a great rest of the day.